So the Charlotte Hornets still don't have a head coach. How problematic is that this far out from the end of the regular season? We'll discuss it, plus rummage through the sicko satchel, all today on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets, your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, in a minute, cuz, we live. We live. <laughs> It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your podcast, and that includes YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. Game off. we got to talk more about Monopoly Go. This game is off before we even get started. This fast-paced game lets you team up with friends for tournaments to unlock awesome prizes like unique stickers for trading, cool playing pieces, and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. So download Monopoly Go, now free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. All right, we're on again. There's Doug. Doug Branson. You can find him on his Substack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. You can listen to me, Walker Mail, on WFNZ every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. Who, buddy, taking a break? Then we're coming late to the people on a Monday. We've been going through it, buddy. We've been going through it, but we're here. We're here to record in the off season. We're ready to go, except we're not so ready to go with the Hornets because they don't have a head coach. Why don't they have a head coach yet, Doug? What's going well, on? Well, because we're just like the Hornets. We're better late than never, right? I mean, eventually we're going to be on, and eventually the Charlotte Hornets are going to get a head coach. Look, I don't know why. I don't know why they haven't hired someone. <laughs> I think, you know, the most positive spin is that they are taking their time. They are doing their due diligence. The problem with the most positive spin, Walker, is Kenny Atkinson. I remember Kenny Atkinson. I, you That's know right. what? Before Kenny Atkinson, I lived in this naive world where the Charlotte Hornets would go to someone with a bag of cash and say, we'd like you to be the head coach. And that person would say yes. And then that person would be the head coach. But now I live in this world where I'm not sure that anyone wants to be the Charlotte Hornets head coach. In fact, they had to go and get the old guy that used to be the head coach. So, you know, it's tough to feel that positive spin on this because the negative spin is they've gone to both of these uh, these guys, Charles Lee and J.J. Redick, the, the two leaders in the clubhouse for the job, they've presented it. Maybe they've even made an offer. And maybe Charles Lee and J.J. Redick looked at the offer and said, well, you know, the Lakers, there's an opening there. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to do my due diligence. Phoenix, they haven't fired Frank Vogel yet, but it might be coming. That could be another interesting opportunity. So I, I don't know what to think at this point. Your world is my world, is the Hornets' world. I think – I think it might just be reality, what you're feeling, Doug. I don't think that you're paranoid. Um, I think that this is becoming a problem. I wasn't willing to call it a problem like early last week or even a couple of weeks ago. But man, it's been a while. And now we're starting to see other vacancies open up. I mean, here we are going through the first round of the playoffs. And now the Lakers job opens up. Phoenix, High probability, in my opinion, maybe maybe I shouldn't say that. High possibility, not probability, that Frank yeah, Vogel. Be careful. Won't, be careful. I know. I know. Won't be coaching for the Phoenix Suns anymore. And so, okay, great. JJ Redick, Charles Lee, whoever. Here are your two choices. You either get to coach this historic franchise with the Lakers, get to coach LeBron on his way out of the league with Anthony Davis, with them probably doing something to switch up the roster, trading for another star, and contending, right? Like at least contending in a way that they're going to reach the playoffs, even if they're not competing for a championship. That's all the likelihood. And even with Phoenix having such a terrible season, even with expectations being high for that job, you're at least going to make the playoffs, especially if you can tinker with that roster a little more. Look, there are plenty of reasons as to why the Hornets are a better job. But, Doug, even so, like I'm not going to put money down on those coaching candidates picking Charlotte over the Lakers, picking Charlotte over Phoenix. And there are plenty of reasons as to say the Hornets' job is more attractive, certainly from a pressure standpoint. But are they actually going to do it? In our world that we share together, nah, man, they're choosing the Lakers or the Suns over the Hornets if they're given that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, pressure standpoint for sure, but from a talent perspective, I mean, you're not going to get much more talent than you would get in Phoenix. And, you know, depending on what LeBron James does or doesn't do, you've, you've still got, you know, significant talent there in L.A. and you've got a motivated, a traditionally motivated franchise. Whereas Charlotte is traditionally an unmotivated franchise. And listen, you've got two guys in... Gabe Plotkin and Rick Schnall, who are new, 
Uh, but new can also mean mystery. Like, we don't know what these guys are going to do. And I'm sure there's communication in these job interviews. And, and, I, and I've said this before on the show, J.J. Redick and Charles Lee, they, they should be approaching that interview as if they're interviewing this franchise, saying, you know, well, are you serious about going and getting me the talent? Because, you know, I, I felt bad for Steve Clifford twice now that he's been given the keys to a franchise that did not do everything that was necessary to put the talent around him that I felt like could give him the best opportunity to showcase his coaching talent. So the, the first opportunity for sure. The second opportunity, there was a bit of a haunted house thing going on. The problem with the weight, Walker, comes down, I think, to two things. One, that Steve Clifford left early. And they sort of framed it like that that was going to yeah. give them a, an advantage. And now, it, and now it's like, well, I guess that advantage is gone. The second thing is that Jordy Fernandez, one of the candidates that was in line for the Hornets coaching gig, was gobbled up very quickly by Brooklyn. And so it can be done. And Brooklyn, that I mean, it's in a big city, but I mean, talent-wise, I think it's kind of on the same level um, as, as the Hornets. And so then you got to go like, what's, so what's going on there? What did Jordy Fernandez see or, or, or not see in Charlotte that he saw in Brooklyn? And maybe it was a giant bag of cash because that's like the Hornets. I think they could go out and get Charles Lee and JJ Redick, but they can't compete money wise on the same level as an LA or Phoenix. They have to go up and up and above that to make up for the fact that they're not similar in, in talent or destination. Oh, maybe it was a job opportunity. I mean, maybe the Charlotte Hornets just didn't offer Jordy Fernandez the job. Like, we, could, we maybe could be. we're just we're viewing this and no, and I'm I'm with you with the the fear here, but maybe they just didn't offer Jordy a job in Brooklyn. They could see, look, I don't want to get caught with my pants down, not having a head coach this deep into the process, and so. Jordy, if you're good with this man, just come coach us and we'll call it a day. I don't need to interview any more candidates. You cool? You good? Cool. We got a next head coach. Charlotte might have held out hope for Charles Lee or somebody else. And I don't know. There's your worry. Let's take a break and I'll tell you my worry. Coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. Some similarities there, but I also want to expound a little on why I'm so worried about this coaching process taking as long as it has. We'll get to that in just a moment here on the Locked on Hornets podcast. It's game off for the Charlotte Hornets, and it's also game off here for Monopoly Go. This episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. we got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go, and I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that, Walker, but there's just so much good stuff in this game. i got to keep discussing it. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for timed tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards, and the more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock, and there's just so much to get. Unique stickers you can trade with your friend and your friends to complete albums for big prizes, cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with, hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults, plus Monopoly Go feels new and it's exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like digging for treasure or a robot pachinko machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. This episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and the NHL. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. More Locked On Hornets ahead. Let me tell you why I'm worried, Doug, because okay. you're, you're right. It, the Kenny Atkinson stuff happening, that, that stuff is very it's real. Terrifying. So, <laughs> by the way, Kenny Atkinson, a candidate. He's a candidate for the Lakers. If you look at the finalist, according right. to Sham Sharani of The Be Athletic, careful. I think Woj has this as well. It's Charles Lee as a candidate for the L.A. job. 
It's J.J. Redick. So those are the two supposed finalists here for the Hornets job. So those two guys are in it. Mike Budenholzer and you have Kenny Atkinson. All of them are in the mix. So let's go down that list, shall we? Two are finalists that haven't agreed to the job yet or haven't officially been offered, but okay. Like I, I hope one of them has been offered, but who knows? The third one is Kenny Atkinson. There's just no way. I don't care if it's a different regime. There's just no way you can welcome him to Charlotte or offer him the job again. And the fourth one is Mike Boonholzer, who is going to want that big bag of cash that you're talking about. Okay. And just not going to do it. The only saving grace with Budenholzer possibly coaching this team is the familiarity, but we don't expect that to happen. And so now that you have all of these candidates, it feels like first, second, if Budenholzer is your third, like are we going to play in D? Are we going to Darvin Ham? Which you could do worse. You really could. Like Darvin Ham, okay. I would I'd rather have Charles Lee. The J.J. Reddick stuff, I'd still rather go with the experience of Darvin Ham. I, I don't think Darvin was amazing in this series with the Lakers. They lose to the Nuggets. I also think that he was just fine. But the other thing here, Doug, is we can go back to a plan D that didn't work in Dan Tony just last offseason or two offseasons ago, right? Your boy, wins. 50 games. Nope. But like, it, it was that, that was the biggest problem that I had when they went back to Steve Clifford is because they didn't plan for this. They had a bunch of candidates. They had, all right, let's David Vanterpool, uh, a couple of assistants, uh, Charles Lee, B. My, <laughs> Mike D'Antoni, Terry plan Stotts. B. And then when the Kenny Atkinson thing fell through, Doug, they didn't go after any of them. Or like, uh, Steve Clifford. So, <laughs> plan C. Yeah. Like, I, I it just and, feels and, like this is going to be the second time. Go ahead. It just it feels like this is going to be another time they don't get one of their top two choices or top three choices. And I so I think you're less uh, uh, you're less fear and more frustrated. And I think you have every right to be frustrated because I am Fair. tired of being Plan D. I'm tired of the D. I'm tired of being tired Plan of D. I want Plan it. A. I want them to back up the Brinks truck and control what they can control and go and get their guy. If their guy is Charles Lee, they should have gotten their guy. They could do it. It would just require something that this franchise has been, to this point, unwilling to do, and that's invest everything that they need to invest, be decisive, be, be quick. And, you know, I, I, there's, there's one thing to, to rush, and there's another thing to, to sort of get on the back foot and let everybody else go and get your guy. No one is accusing them of rushing. No, they cannot be saying. accused of that. Yeah, And, and the, the, the whole thing, you, you mentioned this too, like Budenholzer wants a lot of money. Look, if you don't want to hire Budenholzer, don't hire Budenholzer. But yeah. money should not be the, the, the barrier to that. Go and, go and get your guy. If you're serious about winning, and you're serious about winning sooner rather than later, then, then this should be something that you're serious about getting the leader of your roster. This should not be an experiment. So with the, I said this on Wes and Walker too. If we go back to the Kenny Atkinson thing for just a moment, a lot of that can be blamed on Kenny. I am not a fan of the way that he conducted business there. One of the reasons that I buy into as to why he didn't take this job was because the Charlotte Hornets apparently were trying to manhandle him into keeping a couple of the already pre-existing assistant coaches and not letting him choose who he wanted to. So if, if, that's the case with one of these other coaches. Like, I don't know, man. It's a new regime. I hope that's not the case. But is that <laughs> well, you going know, to... At that point, you would be keeping two sets of us because you've already got assistance from Borrego still on the payroll, and you've got assistance from Clifford. Like, at some yeah. point, <laughs> at some like, point, you've just got to eat that. So if, if you're the Hornets, you have to do everything in your power to make this job attractive, right? Okay, so what are the attractive pieces? It's the fact that it looks like you have a potential all NBA player. There is the potential there for Brandon Miller, and that's a big time attractive piece. The other attraction is it's glass half full or half empty with LaMelo, but the half full is an all-star point guard who makes everybody better around him, certainly offensively, and half full, half empty with Mark Williams, but half full is, oh, you have a legit starting defensive center, and all three of those pieces go a long way into helping you. The the unattractive part of this is the fact that you've lost your entire franchise's history. It hasn't changed in the last six years. You get blown out in, in a couple of the play-in tournament appearances that you have. And, well, 
they don't let you choose your assistant coach and you don't make a lot of money and your assistants don't like make a lot of money. You need to be doing everything you can to buck all of that trend. And that's not a Mike Budenholzer pun. I just need you to buck that trend, period, right? If, if you're looking for Charles Lee and you're saying, hey, what or J.J., because J.J. Redick just joined the pivot. I, I know he is wildly polarizing, much more polarizing than these other coaches with experience. But if J.J. is your guy, I just heard J.J. on his car wash podcast tour on the pivot with Ryan Clark saying, look, I got a comfortable seat. I get to be on the A team for the NBA broadcast crew, get to talk with Mike Breen and Doris Burke all the time. I get to talk on all of these podcasts. I get to host my own. I get to discuss all sorts of different basketball philosophies with these stars. Like I am not chomping at the bit to go coach the Hornets unless you make it worth my while. And that's the question. Have the Hornets made it worth JJ and or Charles Lee's while to have them be excited about this opportunity? Or are they just giving them lukewarm offers and then hoping somebody says yes to it until we get to plan D? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I've got two things, and I think the second thing will lead us into this Rod Boone uh, okay. clipping that we have from his latest uh, Q&A column. The, the first thing, though, is that I have a baby. I don't know if you know this. Breaking news, I have a baby. And yeah. as the baby gets older, you learn that silence is something that you long for, you dream about, <laughs> and yet when it actually occurs in your household while the baby is in the household – you become suddenly frightened by it. What's going on? Mm -hmm. What are they doing? What are they? And, and it's the unknown. And so the same thing applies here. It's the silence. It's the waiting. It's them not going and get, getting their guy immediately while Jordy Fernandez goes to Brooklyn, while all these names start to crop up. And the fear is that you're going to run into the bathroom and toilet paper will be everywhere and the toilet will be overflowing and the baby has suddenly destroyed the bathroom. That is the fear that I have uh, with both the Hornets and my own child. The second thing is that here's what I actually fear. I fear that Charles Lee got into the room and J.J. Reddick got into the room and Jordy Fernandez got into the room at some point. And the ownership group and Jeff Peterson maybe approached those interviews in terms of telling them the direction of the franchise and what they were going to do. They approached those in the same way that they've approached it publicly, which I would say has been lukewarm, has been a little vague, a little bit of, oh, you know, well, maybe uh, we're going to uh, slow and steady, sustainable, but, da, 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 but, but nobody, I, I cannot talk to a fan and say like, hey, have you, did you hear what the owner said? Yeah, yeah. Have you heard Jeff Peterson's press conference? Sure. What do you think? I don't really know what to think. I don't know. They haven't come out really strong one way or the other. What are they going to do? They want to come. They want a championship. Do they want to make the playoffs next season? I don't know. And so if they've approached it like that with these guys, then I don't blame Charles Lee. I don't blame Jordy. I don't blame Charles Lee. And I don't blame J.J. Reddick for waiting to see what the Lakers say. Because if you don't back up the Brinks truck and you don't have a vision, then what do you got? Yeah, let's bring that into the third segment. Coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. <laughs> I'm hot. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. I think we both are. We're both matching energy. We're not recording in the morning, and we both are waiting TikTok on this coaching vacancy to be filled. I think you and I are both are coming at this from an equally passionate place. By the way, it's it's so obviously going to be filled in about 20 minutes. I can tell That's you right. that right now. <laughs> That's right. 435 on a Thursday. <laughs> Ad, or Adrian Wojnarowski is going to put that tweet out at 5 p.m. Hopefully, we get finished in time, and actually, he does it maybe tomorrow. Coming up next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. Before we move on a little bit more about our frustration with the head coaching vacancy, I want to tell you all about DoorDash. This episode is brought to you by DoorDash. If you want to make mom smile, start Mother's Day with flowers or surprise her with gifts from the brands that she loves delivered the very same day with DoorDash. This is going to be a great gift for my mom. She loves DoorDash. She likes hanging out at the crib and ordering from her favorite pizza place, ordering from her favorite Mexican restaurant. So DoorDash just might be that present for her doug stay away from my mom i'm gonna dash mom have a door, sweet nope. right now stay away stay away <laughs> stay away get all your mother's day gifts all in one place and you can get 50 percent off your next order up to 15 dollars when you spend 15 plus on your next flower convenience grocery or retail order now with code locked on nba 
That's code Locked On NBA L O C K E D O N N B A. Order using DoorDash today. Terms apply. More Locked On Hornets ahead. So we voiced our frustration with the coaches, one coach having not been hired. And look, one thing I do think it's important to take note of, I do think, I think, that Charles Lee and J.J. Redick have each had second interviews with the Hornets. And so if they're accepting a second interview, then maybe that does illustrate their interest in the job. Or maybe they're just taking a second interview. They're not accepting the job. I don't know what to make of that. I at least know that they're interested enough to take a second interview if that is indeed what has been reported. And short of that, I'm not sure. We know that Charles Lee, maybe without accepting the job in the first place, like Kenny Atkinson, maybe Charles Lee could decide that he likes sticking with his championship contender as a lead assistant. Like, that's what Kenny decided to do. Again, don't accept the job, Charles, if that's what you want. But I would understand if that's what you want uh, and and you just decide to stay away from the Hornets. We'll figure it out. Rod Boone had a write-up on the Charlotte Observer talking about the strategy and what the Hornets have to do. Uh, Doug, I know you had some thoughts on this. What did Rod Boone have to tell the people a part of the Charlotte Observer? Well, so someone it's a QA and a article, and someone asked him, you know, what's the what's the direction of the franchise? What's the strategy here? What are the goals for the team at this point? And here's Rod Boone's response to that. While they have to be strategic in their attempt to push toward a sustained winning direction, attempting to speed up the process could have damaging ramifications and won't do anything to help their bottom line anytime soon. There has to be a balance and they have to light their fire as soon as possible. Again, with the proper perspective. That's the direction they appear to be headed this summer. I, I, I couldn't put it any simpler, Walker. What more do you want? <laughs> it's very compl- <laughs> I don't know. It's very, compl- it's very, yeah. it's very complicated. But I, I don't mean, even, but here's the thing. I don't blame Rod for being somewhat confusing here because in the, in the vacuum of information that we have on the direction of this team, and I blame ownership for that. I blame Jeff Peterson in a very lukewarm opening press conference. At some point, Someone has to come out and clearly define the expectations and the goals for this team. And until then, Rod has to kind of be like, well, sustain, and but you got to light their fire. There's a light their fire in there. There is. There's yeah. a proper perspective. As soon as possible, in there. which which that's like that's contradictory, right? If if you start attempting to speed up the process could have damaging ramifications and won't do anything to help their bottom line, and then the very next sentence includes a <laughs> phrase such as, they have to light their fire as soon as possible, then that is the exact antithesis of what whose you had fire? just said. I, I don't know time. whose fire are we lighting. I'm not, are we lighting the ownership's fire? Are we lighting our money yeah. on fire? Are we lighting – who are we lighting on fire? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, what I do know, look, if, if you wanted to interpret that the best way you could, perhaps that means it's not like they can trade any of their assets away for a star, a falling star. We had that conversation last week. So that's what could be a damaging ramification if you decide to get rid of your assets for one of these stars when you're not ready. Perhaps that's something you're discussing. But right, like they, they need to figure out what they're going to do here at head coach unless they just want to take whatever is falling down the mountain by taking the third best option. I, look, and maybe they walk backwards into something nice. Like maybe Darvin Ham is a good coach, Doug. Like we know LeBron James is going to control everything that happens with that Lakers organization. It looks like that's happening now. We know the Lakers are going to give him the power to have control over the franchise. It's what the Bus family does. They want to tend to the stars. That is their MO. If you keep the stars happy, then everything else will fall into place. And so maybe Darvin Ham will do a better job with a much more conventional job like what you might have with the Hornets. I don't know. I just know that when your plan, when when it doesn't go according to plan and you don't seem to be legitimately prepared when it doesn't go your way the first or second time. And I think that's what's happened with the Hornets. Steve Clifford was never a part of their plan the first time. Is this happening again, right? Darvin Ham was never on their radar, at least as far as a finalist goes, until he had a job available, which, I, I yeah, I, who knows, man? I don't know what to make of this. And you're right, Doug. I don't know what strategy they're rolling with because we just don't have any real concrete evidence as to what they're thinking because their lack of clarity. Yeah, I mean, the Darvin Ham thing, like the Lakers, that's such a unique situation 
where, right. you know, are you coaching the team? Are you coaching uh, LeBron? Is LeBron coaching you? Like, what? <laughs> it's very confusing. And so I don't think, though, from my look around the sort of view of Darvin Ham, this doesn't appear to be a, an Adrian Griffin situation where it was like, okay, that guy seemed wholly unprepared for the <laughs> yeah. job, Giannis or no Giannis. And Giannis is one of the more, I would say, uh, I don't know. He, he, he's, he's, he's getting a little bit of a reputation of being a, a bit of a difficult star to handle, but all stars are in some way. But I, but I think it was viewed less in, in that light and more in like, okay, this guy just didn't seem to be, to be prepared to deal uh, with like a playoff-ready roster. And so I, I don't get that same sense with Darvin Ham. I, I think that the Lakers fan base has a problem with, with getting bounced in the first round, and they're taking that problem out on Darvin Ham. And probably they need to take that problem out on their roster construction. So yeah, I would be fine with look if if Char if they haven't if they don't want to commit to Charles Lee or JJ Redick, and or and or those two don't want to commit to Charlotte, then absolutely let's get Darvin Ham in and and see see what he's made of. Because ultimately, yeah, we talked a lot about this with assistant coaches too. Like it's just I think it's so difficult to know definitively how a coach is going to like fit with the roster and and deal but but he said but again darvin ham he coached a very veteran laden team in la and i just don't get the sense that like those veterans were like this guy has no idea what he's doing or he probably would have gotten adrian griffin he wouldn't have even survived the season well and and also by the way it, it we saw a western conference finals appearance from the lakers last year and ultimately the last two huh. seasons we saw the lakers get bounced by a champion and defending champion in right. the same team with it being the Denver Nuggets. Darvin Ham does have that relationship, by the way. That's something we should absolutely take note of. He was in the Hawks organization when Rick Schnall was a minority stakes owner there, and Jeff Peterson was a part of that franchise too. So you do have some familiarity, and we've seen them go with a lot of familiarity hires. Last thing to end the pod for me here as we just wrap up the coaching search – I don't know about Sicko Satchel. I we we'll get to it. We'll we, get to it next show. You maybe you, let's do that. I, let's do that. I'll just say this: the Sickos have outdone themselves. Uh, okay. We got hot and bothered on this episode, and so we, we, we went did. a little long. But we will get to the Sicko Satchel because there are some really good Sicko questions. Yeah, my my last thing here is with Darvin Ham. It, perhaps you know you hire him and it all works out. My thing is. It, they actually have done a nice job. Like the Hornets this offseason, I've liked a lot of the moves that they made. Jeff Peterson, I, I don't know if I would choose another GM over him. Jeff Peterson seems like a totally reasonable and smart and respected hire. I'm all for that. Analytics decisions, they just hired, I forget who we talked about last week. Patrick Harrell. This, Patrick Harrell, thank you, who has had a big role within the NBA and their scheduling and is very respected. Great hire. Their assistant GM, somebody that they're familiar with that has a nice track record with Atlanta, great. If, if you care more about what they've done so far in practice, awesome. There are reasons to be confident that they can take care of this. But when they get to what I think is the biggest decision of the offseason so far, unless you consider Jeff Peterson as that biggest and then you're holding Rick Schnall and Gabe Plotkin accountable, you can. But the head coaching position, monster decision. And if that's not going well, that's that's a pretty big thing to not go well and for you not to be prepared for if you don't get one of your top two options. And that's what concerns me if we want to put a bow on this, Doug. And, and what concerns me is I want them to light my fire, but the silence is deafening, and the silence means my baby is lighting my house on fire. I got to go. That, that's right. You talked about <laughs> toilet paper off the roll. It feels like Rick Schnall is walking into the next press conference with toilet paper on his shoe and it's clear, you know, he just came from the bathroom. I'm hoping that's not the case, but we'll see. Maybe by the next episode, we'll have a new head coach. That'll do it for Locked On Hornets. Thanks for making us well, your maybe first Maybe in the next listen. 10 minutes, uh, knowing, maybe. knowing how knows? this show goes. Who knows? Uh, make us your first listen anywhere you get your pods, YouTube, Spotify, At Apple. And make sure you subscribe yeah. to YouTube as well. Yeah, go ahead and search that. And, nope, uh, still no coach. Still no coach. We're good. Okay, there you go. Follow Doug Branson on Twitter, Doug Branson, LOH. Follow him on his Substack, every com. Listen to me, WFNZ, every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. on Wesson Walker. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow.